So hello viewers, today I am going to show you a case in which the gentleman had uh, acromioclavicular uh, disruption uh, type 3 and he has presented to us after 2 weeks. Now sick scapula syndrome or scapular dyskinesia is usually associated with more than half of these patients who are treated non-surgically. Hence I treat only type 1 and type 2 non-surgically type 3, type 4, type 5 and type 6 which is based on Rockwood classification I always operate. Now today I am going to show you a gentleman who is 2 weeks down the line um, and he already has developed this scapular dyskinesia. So my goal today is to show you these patients and, how, and to tell you if you have these patients look for scapular dyskinesia as it can be quite disabling. So this is the gentleman who uh, unfortunately had an episode of unconsciousness and fell from stairs at home and he was admitted in uh, medicine um, and they were investigating his seizures but he also now complains of uh, right shoulder pain and a prominence over the right shoulder uh, which is bothering him and which is stopping him from doing his day to day activities. Now if you see this extra here, you can see this is completely displaced, the coracoclavicular interval is increased and there is complete displacement of the clavicle. So this is a typical type 3 acromioclavicular dislocation. Now the evidence is divided, you know some people say that uh, you can leave it and some people say you can operate from day 1. I usually treat or uh, conserve type 1 and type 2, type 3, 4, 5 I always operate because a significant proportion more than half patient who are treated non-surgically develop what we call is a scapular dyskinesia or sick scapula syndrome uh, which then uh, causes a lot of problem uh, to these patients afterwards. If I show his uh, uh, x-rays of the chest, uh, just to compare because he had bilateral uh, prominence. So if you see here, he has got some degenerative changes even on the other side. Let me just uh, zoom, zoom in a little bit here if you can see, uh, but if you see here, this is completely gone up and this is causing pain and symptoms. So for me, type 3 always operative intervention. So I am not now going to show some of his videos to show how scapular dyskinesia looks in these patients and this remember is only 2 weeks down the line. So now I am asking him to forward flex. So if you see the position of the scapula, this looks pretty normal on both the sides. Now I will ask him to bring down, so now focus on the scapula, can you see this? There is a medial prominence which is not there, can you see this? Can you see just there, this medial prominence? This is a classical example of scapular dyskinesia. Now I will ask him to abduct. So if you see this, I am asking him to abduct, can we go up? Pura upar tak and now bring down. Now again, see the pattern of scapula on both the sides. This is the normal side. And can you see? Now, this is the medial side of the scapula was becoming winged. I will repeat again. This focus on the right scapula. Can you see this winging? This is classical, classical dyskinesia which is associated with non-surgically treated type 3 acromioclavicular joint. So viewers, I hope now you understand what is scapular dyskinesia. It is asymmetrical or arrhythmic movement of a scapula uh, secondary to injuries and there are multiple factors but uh, type 3 acromioclavicular dislocation or acromioclavicular disruption is one of the causes and this is the prime reason that I treat type 3 uh, ACJ dislocations operatively. Now the evidence suggests that you need to wait for around 3 to 4 weeks and if they develop scapular dyskinesia you should operate else you can treat them non-surgically. But it is very hard to uh, treat uh, this uh, non-surgically with physiotherapy as you require specialist physiotherapist who can dedicate a lot of time uh, in order to correct this uh, abnormality. 
So I hope you find this video useful and I hope now you have got some understanding of uh, what is scapular dyskinesia. There are other causes as well so please read about it. So I hope you find uh, this video useful. Uh, please uh, give us a thumbs up and please do comment if you see a patient of uh, scapular dyskinesia and what are your experiences and also please do not forget to subscribe and share our channel. Thank you.